Are you overwhelmed with all the gear you need to set up a YouTube channel and film your videos? I know when I first started that it was kind of overwhelming and especially if you don't, you know, if you're on a budget, then what kind of gear do you do you need? So in this video, I'm going to be talking about the YouTube gear that beginners need, but even if you've been at this a while, uh, that you can always improve your equipment. So if you improve your equipment, then you can improve the quality of the videos that you produce. And this will help you to keep people watching because they see beautiful videos and ultimately get, you know, your ultimate goal is to get more views and subscribers. So therefore, um, I'm going to look at, you know, different cameras and mics, software, etc. that I've that I've been using for the last few years. And um, maybe, you know, you might want to think about getting the same kind of gear or I'm going to give you different options, but uh, basically, the best is to just start with what you've already what you're already using, and just do the best with what you've got. My name is Herman Drost, and my channel is all about how to grow your audience on YouTube, so you can generate traffic, leads, and sales on autopilot. We're talking about the best gear for beginners, and basically, we're going through a gear checklist. And the question I have is, what camera are you currently using to film your YouTube videos? So uh, put that in the chat, and uh, or if you're watching a replay, put that in the comments. When I first started, that uh, I started just using my uh, iPhone. I think it was a 5, 5S or something, or maybe 4S at that time. And I used, uh, used the smartphone for many years before I switched to... Uh, different cameras. So we're going to look at some different cameras you can start off with. And uh, currently I'm using the Canon EOS M50, which is a great little camera. So um, so we've got some people here that uh, Shay's World saying, I use my phone. Uh, Ali saying, I just use my camera on my Mac. And Somebody saying Samsung phone. So yeah, people, yeah, a lot of people using their phone these days. So it's amazing. I mean, the phone is, uh, the phones these days have such great quality. So uh, you can use those. Okay, we're going to move on here. So we're looking at that. And then uh, let's take a look at filming first. This is the a picture I took of my, Canon M50. Harley's using the 77D. I haven't heard of that one, but I assume Canon's are great cameras. But this is the Canon M50 that uh, I'm currently using, current, currently using even to do this live stream. But uh, I just thought I'd show you some of the features. Uh, this camera is easy to learn, uh, easy to use has dual pixel focus and has face tracking and object tracking. It's got a flip screen so you can see what you're filming. Uh, you can also use the Camera Connect app. Uh, you know, you download the app on your phone and then you can, you know, if you're just by yourself, you can use the Camera Connect app to film yourself from far away. So it's good for for video and photos, you can use it for 4K. Uh, you can use it to take a picture of yourself or take pic you know, a good picture for your thumbnails. So I use it for thumbnails. It's got the uh, slow motion. So uh, that that's good. You can also shoot in 4K mode. And uh, I mentioned dual pack pixel already in face tracking and the uh, flip screen and then the built-in Wi-Fi too you know that that hooks up with the the camera app so it's a it's a great little great little camera and so I'm using that now and it, t it takes really good videos and photos but um, I thought I'd also 
show you some of the um, extras that I use with the phone. So I'm using the uh, Movo VXR10 microphone. Let's see if I can show you a picture of that. Let's see, I have it here. Yeah, so I got this, um, you can see it here. This is a, sits on top of the camera. But here's the box that came in, the Movo. So it's, it's a great little camera. I actually, it was recommended to me as better than the Rode, uh, Rode Mic Me. So using that one there. And then uh, you've also got, um, so you know, you got these other little things which you, you might want to get, you know, with the camera. So we've got the neutral density filter. This is kind of handy, you know, on really sunny days. If you're shooting outside, then, uh, you know, you can put that on the front of your camera and you can adjust it to, uh, you know, it's kind of like sunglasses that you put on and you can take photos in direct sunlight, which is pretty handy. And then, of course, you know, you want to get some uh, bat extra batteries, because like this, this battery I have here for the camera only lasts about two hours, so it's just enough for the live stream. But, you know, if you're out filming, then you want to have a couple extra batteries. And then, of course, you want to have the S, uh, SD cards. You can see that. I don't know if you can see that very well. But um, it's not, not focusing. Oh, here we go. 64. Can turn it up like that. I got 64 gigabytes, uh, 95 megabytes per second. I think these are like 20 bucks, Extreme Pro. Uh, so that's, that's what you need to put in your camera. And I've also got this uh, speed card reader. You can see that. So that's that's kind of handy because uh, you can just put the SD card in there and then it'll read it uh, very very speedily for your camera. So you definitely want to get one of those as well. So um, yeah, so I covered all of those high speed card reader, extra camera batteries, etc. So that those are just some of the um, extras that you should probably uh, get with the camera and some camera alternatives so um, we got the uh, smartphone and the um, Logitech webcam and I say do the best with what you got so as I mentioned uh, previously the uh, I st when I first started off in 2006, I just used the smartphone. I think it was a four. I think it was a four S that I used for that. But then um, something that is easy too is the uh, Logitech. So you can just stick that on top of your computer. Actually, in my case, my iMac came. Or most laptops they come with the. Um, well, kind of built-in uh, camera, but mine doesn't work anymore. So this is like, I think 50 or $70, and you can just plug it into USB, and off you go. So those are a couple of different options. Uh, somebody here mentioned, uh, who was that? Oh, Jeff. Yeah, Jeff had mentioned, how about the GoPro? Funny you should say that, because uh, I had a birthday last week, and my son had a GoPro, I think it was the uh, 4 Hero, GoPro Hero 4 session or something like that. And he said he's not using it. And I said, hey, you know, I need need to have a, a camera for on the bike or out swimming or something like that. So what he did, he sent me his uh, little GoPro and I, I tried it out yesterday on the bike and uh, it, it's pretty good, it has very good sound. Kind of expensive though, four hundred dollars was the start. I think it was like two years ago, but it, it captures pretty good um, video and images and has good um, good audio on it. So, but uh, I don't know if I'd recommend this one. But you know they have uh, 
the GoPro Plus, which you know have unlimited um, unlimited storage, I think, etc. So yeah, it's a great little camera too. But I'll be interested, Jeff, what what type of GoPro you're using at the moment? Is it the latest one or one of these? So those are some options of different cameras. And I still use the Logitech webcam and I still use my um, iPhone for like, you know, bit capturing B-roll because it's got that 10, 1080p, uh, it shoots 1080p video. So it's uh, pretty good for that. But I'm thinking of upgrading to the 11 or 12, you know, later stage. Okay, so uh, oh, another one uh, that's another extra is the Osmo, DJ Osmo uh, mobile gimbal for smartphones. So this is a, a great little um, instrument. This is the Osmo 2. I think I can show you here. This is it here. So uh, you just put your, put your phone in there switch it on and then you can capture very smooth motion with your phone. So that's, I think it was like a hundred dollars, probably cheaper now, but they have the Osmo 3 now, which uh, enables you to put, put the audio in there much easier. So this is a great, great, uh, great one for capturing smooth footage. But I think the, what beats it is probably an easier is like the GoPro, which would be uh, yesterday, I just strapped it to my head or to helmet, and then you could just uh, use it like that. And it's very small, waterproof, down to 33 feet. So that's that's pretty handy. Okay, let's talk about audio. So uh, this is some of the different mics that I use. So I mentioned the... Uh, the Movo microphone. Um, I just showed you that previously that I put on top of the on top of the M M fifty. So, um, oh, oh, Jeff, thanks for mentioning that. Yeah, um, the 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 Movo RX ten microphone sits on top of the camera and it. When you get it, it comes with a shock mount and a windscreen. So if you're out and about and it's windy, then or if you have a lot of noise, then the windscreen is helpful. So when you get that microphone, it just sits on top of the camera. Uh, an alternative is that I used before that was a, you know, if you want to be further away from the camera, you can use the uh, Rode SmartLav Plus condenser microphone. So this is about 20 feet I think if you get an extension and you can just clip it on to your shirt and then uh, it gives very good sound because your mouth is closer to the microphone. So that's a, a good alternative if you are wanting to use a lavalier condenser microphone. I've never used the um, wireless, you know, wireless ones, which tend to be more expensive, but... Um, they uh, that that smart lab one is pretty good and uh, you know if you're using if you want to pl plug in something for live streams then um, the one I'm using now this is the snowball microphone that's what I'm using right now so that's about 50 bucks and then uh, my last video I did a review of the toner microphone this is uh, toner TC777 it's about $49 but it's got the uh, it's got the you know the uh, windscreen that you can put over the top. It's got the pop filter. It's got some great uh, you know sturdy legs and then a rubber rubber bottoms to the legs so it doesn't slide around. And you know for 40, 50 bucks, it's a good alternative to the blue snowball microphone and easy one to set up, etc. So that that one's pretty handy as well and then I, th I think mentioning if you're on the phone uh, maybe some other people can chime in here but uh, what uh, what mic to use for your phone like uh, I got 
for, uh, this is a 6S, but you can use the, I think, Video Mic Me. You can plug it directly into your phone. I think there's one for later phones too. But um, the Smart Lab Plus microphone is great if you just want to plug it directly into the phone. But I'd be interested what other people are using for external mics for their smartphones. Oh, and Harley's saying that I, I like having a battery eliminator for recording the studio. Don't have to worry about battery charging. Yeah, I thought, I thought about, uh, yeah, for particular live stream, if you're live stream, you're like two or three hours, then, you know, your battery's not going to last. So that that would be a, a great um, a great alternative and uh, instead of using the batteries. So that's, uh, that's, a, that's a good tip there. Okay, so moving along here. So I mentioned all those mics, and we're going to talk about lighting now. So uh, drop your lights in the chat. You know what kind of lights you're using. I'm using at this current stage. Uh, I, I began using the Cowboy Studio Softbox lighting kit, like a three-point lighting kit system. And then I got the ring light, and sometimes you can just use the ring light uh, just by itself. So, um, so I found that the uh, the, ring, the ring light, you know, it's it's a dimmer, it's a newer ring light, and so um, you can you can you can dim it, etc. And then I've got two soft boxes, uh, one on either side of the ring light that illuminates uh, illuminate me so um, yeah, I think if you're looking for lights I think the new the the ring light is a great option uh, you can also use just you know if you're near a window you could use the uh, the light coming from the window but I think the cowboy softbox studio lighting system that's just a bunch of soft boxes there's other newer lights out there but um, I find it gives you kind of a soft, a softer light on yourself. Uh, the newer, the the ring light is a little bit harsh, so the soft boxes help with that. So that's that comes with uh, with lighting. And uh, Jeff is saying, asking about what about microphones for interviews? Yeah, I think the Smart Lab Plus microphone is great. You can also get an adapter for that, where you can. Uh, the person you're interviewing can use the uh, use the level, you know, use the, you kind of split split the um, cable, and so one would have a lapel, another one have a lapel microphone, and it feeds into the mic. So that's good. And I think there's also other other types of mics, but that that's the only one I can think of at the moment. Okay, we're talking about backdrops. So um, the current backdrop I have, uh, if I can show you that. So this backdrop here, this is just a, uh, a wall hanging. It looks very natural. And I initially had a brick wall, but I found that was like a little bit too harsh. or, or I think I just got sick of it. So... Um, I switched to getting a, a this kind of like wooden. It kind of matches more my character because I love the outdoors, love nature. So the old wooden fence style kind of works with me. Um, but you know, a lot of people have different ones. And uh, as I show on here, the the different types. This is actually tapestry wall hangings from dress lady so you can just go there and do a search for it's most a lot of dresses but you can do a search for wall hangings and you get all these different uh wall hangings so here's like a an office set up you know with a library set up and uh then you got the old wood here you've got bricks you got all kinds you know uh, some of it doesn't look very real but um i think you know if you if you if you search in there, the, the backdrops, you know, if you have a plain wall, which I was using when I first started with YouTube, then um, it wasn't, you know, the, the wall, just a blank wall is kind of doesn't, uh, doesn't, 
it's not very exciting, but if you add, you know, if you want to add something more exciting to your walls and just add a wall hang, it's like 15, 20 bucks and then you've got a great wall hanging. So um, that's, uh, that's, you know, if you're on a budget, that's really great. So you can check out that. That's what he's wall hanging. But some people use uh, LED lights and different, um, you know, even build a whole studio. Okay, we're talking about tripods now. So we've got uh, different tripods that that you can use. So I'm, I'm mentioning the uh, lightweight tripod with a bag. That's the one I have here on the left. The Gorilla Pod and the Switch Pod. Okay, here's the here's here's a tripod that I often use. Just it's I think it's like twenty bucks. So very uh, and then the you can see that you can just you know expand the legs here. Um, all these legs expand. I think come, it goes to about six feet. So that's pretty handy for as far as a tripod. I got the Gorilla Pod, which I can't show you because it's the camera sitting on it. But I got the Switch Pod. This is pretty handy too. I got this at a a video um, video conference. They were giving them away. I think I can't remember how much they are. It might be up fifty bucks or something. But good thing about this is that you can just you know you can hold it like so. You can stand it on. On the table, and then it didn't come with a ball head, but so you might want they uh, uh, see that they've now uh, added a ball head, so you can order the ball head separately. But I just got the ball head from the uh, from my Gorilla Pod, and then you can just put it on top, and so you got the ball head here, and then you can just put your camera on top of the ball head that just slides in and out. So. That's the great thing about the ball head, and you can adjust it. You know, you can uh, have the uh, just turn the knob here, and you can adjust the camera how you like there. And you can see how it just sli slides into the top slot. So that's, oops, that's a switch pod. That's pretty handy. So those are all the different tripods that that I use. And uh, as I say, the Gorilla Pod is what I'm using right now. Okay, let's uh, talk about the video editing because uh, you know if you're working on YouTube, then you do need to have video editing software. And pretty much at the very beginning, I was using iMovie. But then I switched to, because I'm using a Mac, I switched to the ScreenFlow. So the ScreenFlow software is great because it's easy to use, easy to learn, costs about 99, I think $129, I think it is. So um, it's uh, been, you know, has many different, you, know, you can even, if you pay a little bit more, you can get uh, video footage, audio footage, uh, and graphics that when you're working on the timeline, they can easily slide in. So if you want an example of somebody eating apple, you can just search eating eating apple, and then you can get, a vid you can get stock f video footage that you can immediately then put into the, in onto your timeline. So, uh, that's that's pretty handy video editing software let me know in the chat what software you are currently using for uh, editing your videos but here are some different options you got the free editing software so if you're just starting out then uh, you've got iMovie which is for the Mac and you've also got the mobile editing uh, app which you can use on the phone another free one a shortcut you got open shot Filmora, well, you pay for Filmora, but you get a uh, free trial. Lightworks, DaVinci Resolve. I think uh, I think you mentioned this last week, was it, Harley, that it's uh, free and uh, got a lot of features to it. You got HitFilm Express, 
Wii Video and Capwing, which I've done a lot of reviews on, and that that is something that you can just go to capwing.com uh, online and just put your video footage in there. You can trim it, and you know it's great for a free video editing. If you upgrade, then upgrade to the pro version, then you can uh, store all your videos on there. So those are options for free editing. And then the paid editing software, we've got Adobe Premiere, ScreenFlow, you get a free trial of that. Uh, Kenneth is saying, is it better than Adobe? Probably, probably not. Uh, I think Adobe probably has more features. But um, the way I see it is, you know, the more familiar, you know, if you're very familiar with the software, you can do a lot of stuff with it. So, and it's probably, and it's probably a lot cheaper. So I would just go with what you have. You got Final Cut Pro, Camtasia, which is, I think it's about $400, dollars 300 or $400. Sony Vegas and NVIDIA, which is uh, software that, I did a video on that, that you can do slideshows, it's got templates. Uh, so if you're making videos for local businesses, this is a great one because you can just uh, pick a template and then edit the template to create, uh, you know, create uh, videos for local businesses. So that, that would be very handy. Then, uh, oh, okay, so uh, Harley's saying that the DaVinci Resolve is a pro level editor but has a free version. So, uh, yeah, so you can you can use it for free, but you know, if you want more features, as usually is the case, then you would upgrade it. So, those are your options. And then uh, Michael's saying he's just uh, Camtasia. ScreenFlow, FCP, wow, you all three, that's amazing. Best one for the Mac, uh, I would say ScreenFlow is great for the Mac, but uh, you can use iMovie, but a uh, step up from iMovie is uh, ScreenFlow, but you can also use uh, Adobe Premiere, uh, Final Cut Pro uh, would work also. I just find that ScreenFlow is very easy to use. So, and you got the mobile editing app. So you got the iMovie, KineMaster, InShot, LumaFusion, and Capwing also has an app that you can put on your phone. I think it's just for the iPhone. So you can edit your videos in there as well. So these are, uh, mostly these are free. Uh, probably can upgrade to paid versions as well. So those are all the different editing editing apps that you could use. I thought I'd just mention a computer because uh, I wasn't going to mention computer, but I thought I'd just say that, um, you know, if you're, well, of course, if you're not, not using a computer, like a lot of you mentioned that you're using your phone. So you can film on your phone, you can edit on your phone using the different apps. Uh, you can edit on your phone. You know, so a lot of people could, could be using the phone, but I decided that I'd, I'd put down the money for a Mac computer. I was using the Dell computer for many years and it kept on getting viruses and getting, uh, you know, crashing and everything. And then I think about 2015, I, I put down the money for a 27 inch iMac computer and I haven't had any crashes. I didn't install any um, virus software for it and uh, it runs pretty smoothly the only thing I would say and recommend you know definitely get go for the 27 inch screen and get at least 16 gigabytes of memory I think the new ones come with 8 16 go up to 128 gigabytes memory so I don't think you need 128 but 16 is like a sweet spot so uh, mine has eight, came with eight, but it has two other slots where you can put four and four. So you could go up to 16 or you could take out the, um, 
you could take out the memory and then substitute it for, I think, uh, four, four, uh, eight, four, four times eight, so you'd have 32, but the new ones have like up to 128. But on this one is, uh, it's a quad core, Intel Core i7, so uh, I highly recommend getting, uh, you know, the highest core you could possibly get. This one, eight gigabytes RAM, I'd say definitely get, uh, you know, 16. And it's got one terabyte fusion drive. So if you, if you can get two terabytes or three or four terabytes, then you could store uh, more video files on your computer. But the way I saw it is that uh, I'll just save money and get one terabyte and then use hard drives. So as a result, uh, I just buy external hard drives to transfer my video files to those hard drives, which I'll show you later. And so, yeah, this, the, another thing that you might consider is SSD storage. So it's much faster than the, just the normal storage. So you could edit faster at, instead of just the, the normal uh, hard drive. I uh, just thought I'd mention graphics software as well because you do need to make thumbnails. So um, free graphics software, uh, Canva I used for a minute for a long time, still use it for ebooks and uh, all kinds of graphics, you know, for the website, etc. Pixlr is free, you can use that one. PicMonkey, you can get a free trial of that. Gimp's another free one. And KineMaster are all graphic software. The paid software, if you want to do thumbnails, is Thumbnail Blaster, which, which I highly recommend because you've got a lot of templates in there. You can split test your thumbnails. So uh, Canva, you've also got templates there, but you can't split test. And then you've also got uh, Adobe Photoshop, which I think it's like $10 a month, but you know, it's a, a kind of a long learning curve with that. So I tried it for about a month and I found it was uh, too much, too many, too many things to learn. But I use Pixelmator now, which is for the Mac and it's very easy to use and you can, uh, you know, use different text and shapes and uh, colors for your photos you can you know uh, edit your photos in there you also got the mobile app so snapseed's a great one InShot's a great one kinemaster those are also great ones so um mr talented reed is saying that so is there free editing software for android that you would recommend to use um yeah, I think uh, in um, the, for Android, well, Android app would be like KineMaster. You could use that if you're on a, a computer, like, you know, just a, a PC, then you could use something like a Shotcut, OpenShot, that sort of thing, uh, Camtasia. But, you know, for free, free apps, then I would, uh, you know, look at KineMaster. I think LumaFusion is another one. So that's the graphic software. And uh, then you also want to have some backup storage, which I was talking about before. And so what I use, I, I get, use the, um, let me show you a picture of this maybe. I can get it here. So this one here uh, is the, I think it's like four terabytes about a hundred dollars, they can get uh, one terabyte, two terabytes, etc. And all you have to do is just plug in the uh, USB cord into the back of your computer. And if you are using a Mac, then you can just hook up Time Machine and it can back up your, you can do backups to your iMac computer uh, as well. So that's, uh, that's pretty handy. Uh, you also want to look at uh, online storage. So you got the with the i with the Mac, you got iCloud storage, 
you got Google Drive, you got Amazon S3, which is very cheap. I use that for uh, video courses. So uh, that's pretty cheap. You got Dropbox, which I use for transferring files or you want to send a file to, to one of your friends, your family, you can use Dropbox. And Hubic is another one where they give you 25 gigabytes for free, free storage. So and then, you know, if you want more, then you've got to pay for it. But 25 gigabytes is pretty good. So if you want to store your 25 gigabytes for free. But I find my video files, I don't know about yours, but my video files tend to be like 6 gigabytes, sometimes 20 gigabytes. So you soon end up chewing through the storage. So therefore, an external hard drive like the WD or Seagate is great because it's very cheap and you can store a lot of files in there. So I, I got, I've got video files that I've stored uh, on my hard drives that uh, probably go back about four or five years. So just in case, you know, something happens to uh, your channel, you've got your, your videos uh, stored and um, you might want to, you know, go back and use some footage as well. Uh, VD Workshop is asking about the storage. Send us a buy link for the storage drive. Yeah, I think if you check the, I put a, I put links, uh, Amazon links to uh, all the products I'm mentioning in the description below this video. So you got, uh, I think I put that. Uh, drive there so you can check that out thanks for thanks for asking so that's the different drives You've got passport drives WD drives on oh, Ali saying that yes I have those one of those backup storage devices yeah hey man to that uh, live streaming software so um, you can live stream for free just uh, from your desktop. You don't need uh, a certain amount of subscribers, a certain amount of, um, you know, subscribers or views or whatever. You can just go, uh, if you're a beginner, you can just live stream right away. But if you want to live stream from your phone, you need 1,000 subscribers. But I find that if you want to step up your, your live streaming quality and different features that you can use, then I would go for something like Ecamm Live, which uh, allows you to bring in, uh, bring in comments like this comment from Jeff. I can just put it over here. Jeff's asking, what about send space for backup storage? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by send space. Um, I think Dropbox is good, but you know, the, uh, just use the hard drives is is probably probably the best, the external hard drives. So the Ecamm Live, yeah, you can put comments on there. You can put video file, bring in video files. You can you can set up different scenes, etc. So uh, it has a lot of different features that you you can use if you want to do live streaming. So it integrates well with YouTube. You can also stream on Facebook, Twitch, Instagram, etc. And another great thing is that, you know, when your live stream ends, then uh, you can, it automatically saves the file to your computer hard drive. So you have a copy automatically on your computer hard drive. And another thing you can do is that you can actually record videos uh, using the recording feature. So uh, you can just, you know, choose record and then you can record, you know, just like I'm doing the live stream here, I can record my own video uh, using this little window here that I can see myself. And then I can, you know, I can also uh, move this around to the left, to the right, etc. And uh, you can use uh, round or square. And then you can switch back to the portrait mode as well. So it has a lot of different features. So I thought I'd just mention that because uh, live streaming is pretty big these days and does help to get you uh, those, those watch time hours that you need to monetize your channel. 
Uh, keyword research software. I highly recommend getting TubeBuddy. Um, they do have a free version, but if you want to do split testing, if you want to uh, research, you know, tons of uh, keyword research, save a lot of time picking out the right keywords when you research your videos, then I highly recommend uh, getting TubeBuddy. So you can get 20% off with the promo code HermansBuddy and you know any paid version and then you can you can use uh the bulk they have bulk uh bulk end screens bulk cards uh they also help you with uh the tags you know so when you put your tags into the into your video then it'll suggest all these uh related tags which you can just quickly just copy and paste or, or just click the click the tags they suggest and it automatically populates the tags in your video. So that's uh, that's really handy and definitely saves you uh, a ton of time. Okay, so that's pretty much all the gear and equipment that I use uh, in, my, in my office studio, but I thought I'd mention a few filming tips that probably uh, would help you. So what I recommend is film a test shot before recording your whole video. I was recording a video yesterday and I'd forgotten to plug in the, the audio. So fortunately I did a test shot and I found, I discovered that I hadn't put in the, hadn't put in the audio I had, or sometimes I haven't plugged in the right cord or left out the, the cord. So uh, especially if you're doing vlogging, then you definitely want to do a test shot because, uh, and this has happened to me, uh, where I've left the batteries at home and uh, I forgot to put a battery in the camera. So I would also recommend, you know, if you're doing filming outside or if you're going somewhere to film to keep a quick checklist, you know, batteries and uh, uh, audio and SD cards and all that kind of stuff. Film in segments. I found uh, if you film in segments, then you know you film a segment, stop, film another segment. So when it comes to editing, you just edit that particular segment and move on to the next segment. So what I used to do was like just do one long take with all the mistakes in it, and then kind of reverse edit that way. But I find lately I've been using filming in segments, and uh, seems like the editing is faster that way. So. Uh, and then to do, uh, as far as filming goes, you know, make sure you have the camera at eye level. Look and make sure you look into the directly into the lens so that uh, you're addressing the people that are on the other side. Um, if you're not familiar with your camera, like the Canon M50, when I first got it, I used the auto mode. So instead of you know trying to use the manual mode the auto mode you can just set on auto and it, you know you don't have to fiddle with all the settings then as you learn the camera you can you know adjust it to what you want and then you might also film from different angles so left and right or above below you know try all different angles that helps reset the attention of your viewers and then while you're filming make sure you take a photo for your thumbnail so that uh you can take you know several different thumbnail pictures and then you're ready to create the thumbnail what i often do is i'll create a thumbnail even before i actually create the video so and as i create the video then i might adjust the thumbnails so those are some filming tips uh editing tips um Edit while filming. So only record what you need to say, uh, need, what you need to save time. So uh, you don't want to do you know hundreds of different sh B-roll shots because you know that's going to take you for ages uh, trying to uh, put that all together when it comes to editing. So and then you want to also want to keep reusable assets. So maybe your introduction and your end screen clips you know keep them in a separate folder so when you go to 
make a new video, you can just pull in the uh, the assets, you know, pull in your introduction from the from the intro folder and your end screen clips. You could just pull that in from your uh, other folder and maybe have B-roll clips and music clips and just keep that all in one folder so you can keep on reusing these and just pull that in and it'll save you a lot of time. I also mentioned reverse editing. So when you're finished filming your video, instead of starting at the beginning of your your video file, start at the end and um, then, you know, you can quickly see where was the last take of uh, what, when you were filming. And then something you can do is you could, you know, clap three times and then that would that would show in your audio on your timeline in your audio where you want to you know want to begin the editing so you could do something like that another thing you can do is use keyboard shortcuts so with ScreenFlow, uh, i use a bunch of shortcuts but you know whatever editing software you're using you can use the editing shortcuts that on your keyboard and you can just quickly jump to um, you know s splitting it or jump to the end of your timeline or jumping to the beginning of your timeline so you could uh, and then add text graphics transitions to reset the viewer's attention so if you keep all those in separate folders you can just quickly pull them in while you're editing the video and then once you've uh, finished editing you just export your video and make sure you review what you've created before you upload it to YouTube. So sometimes, usually what I do is I'll, I'll let it sit overnight. And uh, sometimes when you're editing in the editing mode, you've been editing for hours, and then you look, you're so close to uh, what you've done, you don't see the mistake. So I let it sit overnight, and I come back in the morning when I'm fresh, and then look through the video that I've edited, and I'll maybe some you know edit out some footage which I think maybe uh, doesn't need to be there or maybe add some footage or add some graphics add some transitions so you're looking at it with fresh eyes and then you you know that kind of enhances the quality of the video edit a checklist for the YouTube channel so how to set up your channel YouTube channel for success so I'll put that uh, I'll put that in the description and uh, I'll also put that in the end screen. So how to set up your channel for success. So you, so you can just you know, click on that and then watch that particular video.